Today's artwork is Poet on a Mountaintop by Shen Zhu from around 1496. This artist was of the Ming Dynasty in China, and this type of painting, called Chinese brush painting, was a very common type of art during that time. When you look at this artwork, I want you to really try to place yourself in the artwork. What would it feel like to be in the pose of that man up on that mountaintop, surrounded by mountains and low fog and clouds and nature, and how it would feel to be the only one in the vastness of nature? Chinese brush paintings from the Ming Dynasty have several key conventions or characteristics in common. Um, one of them is showing humans small in comparison with nature. And this connects to the Buddhist belief of living in harmony with nature, as well as the, the vastness of nature compared with really the small world of an individual person. There's also a lot of, of the same visual characteristics, like the use of expressive brush strokes. So take a look at the different types of brush strokes. Our brush stroke is the mark that is made when the paintbrush hits the paper. So you can see over here on the sides, we have washes of paint. So that is where the artist would water down the ink and create a really light version of the color. So we can see that all through the sides and even throughout you can see there's washes of black ink. So this isn't gray ink and white ink and different shades of gray ink. It's all black ink watered down to various degrees. So we have brush strokes here that are more blobby and splotchy. We have really delicate brush strokes to show the, the leaves. We have, you know, all sorts of different types of brush strokes and they all express different types of feelings and moods and emotions in there as well. And it creates a lot of variety. When the painting is only in one color, we still have a ton of variety in there. So I want you to, as you're looking at it, to see if how many different brush strokes that you can find, how many different values or shades of black you can find and really see all of the variety in this artwork. By putting the art in only black, it adds a new level of focusing on the composition or the layout of the artwork without relying on color. So removing the color allows us to focus on that composition, on the layout of the artwork, as well as focus on the brush strokes. And artists of this time period often created exaggerated views in their landscapes. They created these landscapes as they wanted them to look, not how they actually looked. So they might have made the mountains taller, you know, the, the fog lower or more defined and really increased the, the mood of it by enhancing the landscape and making it better than what they could even see. Now, I also want you to look at this writing here on the artwork. So we have some Chinese characters there at the top left, and that is actually a poem. So I'm going to read that poem to you. It says, White clouds, sash-like, wrap mountain wastes. The rock terrace flies in space, distant a narrow path. Leaning on a bramble staff, far and free I gaze. To the warble of valley brook, I will reply, whistling. So, that fits with our title, Poet on a Mountaintop. There's our poet, and that might be the poem that he's writing about the nature sitting here at the top of this mountain. So I want you to think about what poem you would write and what landscape you would create and imagine what you would feel like in this place. What would you see, smell, or hear? What would it feel to be there? And how would it feel to step out of your day-to-day -day life and away from the conveniences uh, of technology and everything you have in your life and, and think about how you might feel differently about the world after experiencing this place and now after looking at this artwork.